So good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to this session. Maybe we'll just give it one more minute uh, before we, we, we kick the session off. So hold on to your horses. Okay, so let's let's start let's start the session. So welcome to this um, this edition of the micro of the Midi de la Microfinance online. Um, my name is Matthew Genazzini. I work for ADA, um, and I will be your moderator uh, moderator today. And today, the objective of today's session is really to discuss the importance of cybersecurity on the African continent. Really, in an era when uh, digitalization of the financial sector is really gaining momentum every day. Now, before I introduce my uh, distinguished panelists, I'd just like to mention a few uh, a few housekeeping rules. So this session will be recorded and will be made available afterwards on the ADA website. Um, si vous voulez suivre uh, cette session en français, vous avez l'option de choisir uh, le français dans les options du, du Zoom, je pense, en, en bas de votre écran. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, please do write them in the chat and we will answer them. Uh, we will try and answer as many as possible in the Q&A session at the end. And also, lastly, if you have any technical issues, you can also write in the chat and we'll try and get back to you there. Now, um, let's get into the subject. And I'm really pleased to, to have with us uh, three distinguished uh, uh, guests with us today. We've got Sheila Okira, um, the African Digital Financial Inclusion Coordinator at the African Development Bank. We've got Jean-Louis Perrier, who is the African Cybersecurity Resource Center Program Director, quite a mouthful that is, um, and also co-founder of uh, Suricat Solution. And these are my, these are my two panelists uh, that we'll have the discussion today with. But we also have, uh, we also have Ivo Yannick, um, who's the Senior Financial Sector Specialist at CGAP, who will be doing the conclusions of our debate. So welcome everyone to this uh, session. Um, and before, uh, and let me ask uh, my two panelists to, to introduce themselves briefly. Um, Sheila, please uh, go ahead. Um, thank you, Matthew. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sheila Okiro from the African Development Bank. I work in the Financial Intermediation and Inclusion Division and I coordinate the Africa Digital Financial Inclusion Facility, or ADFI. Uh, this is an initiative that seeks to accelerate financial inclusion through leveraging technology. I'm based in Abidjan in West Africa, and uh, thank you for having me on this panel. I look forward to an engaging session. Thank, thank you, you Matthew. Thank you, Sheila. I look forward to it too. Jean-Louis. Hi to all. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Sheila. So I am Jean-Louis Perrier. Uh, the program director of the African Cybersecurity Resource Center, which is a newly launched uh, initiative with the support of the African Development Bank uh, to do what we are called after uh, cybersecurity for financial inclusion and fin financial sector in, um, in Africa. Uh, uh, as a co-founder of Suricate Solutions before, uh, we have had uh, five or six years uh, of experience on the financial sector and financial inclusion in Africa from our headquarters in, in Dakar, uh, Senegal. Thank you, thank you, Jean-Louis. So maybe just to, to, to kick this session off, I'm gonna, I'm gonna launch a survey. Um, and the idea is to ask the audience a simple question. And the question is, how serious an issue is cybersecurity for your institution? And one meaning very low, five meaning very high. I'm going to give you uh, 15 seconds to, to respond to this, this question. And the idea is really to gauge the audience's kind of notion or how serious an issue cybersecurity is for, for, for our audience today. So I'm going to give another five seconds to respond. And then I think we can close it and see the results. Okay, so that's, 
that's quite interesting. So nearly, you know, forty percent. So nearly half of the the the, the, the audience um, uh, rate cybersecurity as a serious uh, issue. Um, I mean, you know, there's generally the majority of people rate it quite highly. So I think what we can establish is that there is already a, an awareness within within our audience members of the, the threat that cybersecurity can have. So, so now we can close that. So thanks very much for that. So I'm gonna kick this off just to try and, uh, I'm gonna look at you, Jean-Louis, and ask you to, to kind of briefly um, describe what cybersecurity is and why it's something that we should be talking about in the context of uh, the, the inclusive finance sector in Africa. Yes, just a word about the awareness we have uh, noticed. This has um, quite drastically changed in the last uh, two or three years, uh, thanks to the efforts of a number of uh, institutions. Uh, uh, for example, the, 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 the CIGAP, we have been working with the CIGAP to define a, a, a regional center uh, concept. And uh, the ACRC project is a, a real life implementation of this, uh, of this concept. So uh, let us see uh, what is uh, um, some facts and figures uh, for the financial sector in, in, in the region. So first, uh, let's see the global threats. Uh, we have 86 persons uh, globally uh, of the uh, acts uh, uh, that have a financial motivation and 91% uh, in the case of financial institutions. In more than 50% uh, uh, of the cases, the uh, reason uh, is uh, organized crime, or the, the originating is uh, uh, organized crime. Uh, we have in 70%, uh, the threat is coming from the outside. That means that there is still 30% uh, of uh, insider threats, which is uh, important. And the average uh, number of days from detection to containment uh, uh, is 280 uh, uh, days, which is long. In that time, uh, uh, the hacker, of course, has all the time to uh, take all your data, perform any uh, uh, fraudulent transaction, and also, as they are very polite guys, uh, wipe out all the traces that might have left in your uh, system before going out to make sure that uh, further forensic investigation will be more, more, more difficult. In the financial sector in, in Africa, we are talking about 3,000 financial institutions and fintech of every size, from uh, the five-person uh, institution to uh, uh, 1,000 people or, or, or more. It's about 250 million customers, mostly fragile customers uh, in, in Africa, of course. And uh, if we look at what the policymakers and the uh, uh, chief risk officer in the uh, financial sector think, in 78 and 71%, they rank, uh, they rank cybersecurity as one of the two, top two or three risks uh, for their uh, uh, organization. Unfortunately, we have very limited resources with about 10,000 uh, cybersecurity experts. Uh, in US, for example, we have 700,000 plus 300,000 open position. We spent 1.5 billion approximately on cybersecurity on the continent for the all sectors, all, uh, which is uh, the yearly spend of the four top uh, US banks. Uh, we have uh, limited support from states uh, with only 14 countries uh, having introduced a national cybersecurity agency. And also we have a very limited, uh, um, uh, I would say embryonic data uh, on the threats and the losses and a very embryonic uh, coordination at the continental level. Although there are some initiatives that have started recently uh, for example, there is a, 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 an African office for Interpol that has been uh, opened in, um, uh, in Africa. So, uh, uh, facing the urgency to develop financial inclusion and digital financial services, the uh, $3.5 billion cost of cybercrime on the continent and the rising number of severe incidents 
I mean, more than $1 million, which is uh, a lot for many, many uh, institutions and almost unbearable for, for most of them. And also stronger regulation. Uh, the sector has to drastically heighten cyber resilience in a smart way. Smart being that can uh, uh, take into account uh, the limited resources that are uh, available. Thank you, thank you, Jean-Louis, for, for giving us this uh, this uh, picture of the of the state. The 280 days um, before detecting is 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 a very long time before before the, these are detected. But maybe coming to something that you mentioned about the ecosystem, and Sheila, I'm going to turn to you. Um, you know, you work for the African Development Bank, uh, an institution that works towards building it, the, this ecosystem. Um, can you explain a little bit why this is important for the African development? Thank you, Matthew. Uh, just allow me to share some slides to put things into context. Please let me know when you can see my slides. We can, we can, we can see them. Can you put them in full screen? One minute. Is that better? Perfect. Okay, great. So, you know, maybe just to put some things into context, um, the numbers in financial inclusion have really been exciting for Africa. You know, when you look at um, the, the FINDEX 2017 report, you see that Africa has a 20% mobile money adoption rate compared to 4.4% globally. Also, we see that half a billion of the mobile money accounts, close to half a billion, are actually in Africa, according to the GSMA uh, 2020 report. 46% of global new additions to regist registered mobile money accounts also seem are also happening in Africa. So really lots of exciting news for the continent when it comes to technology. Despite this, the continent still has the highest number of exclusion at 57%, and even more concerning, uh, the highest gender gap at 11%. Now, I think for the African Development Bank and our partners, and I, I think I'll, it's important that I introduce them, uh, working with the, the African Development Bank, working with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Agence Francaise de Développement, the Ministry of Finance of the Government of Luxembourg, and the French Treasury Ministry of Economy and Finance, actually came together to put, you know, to, to, to create, as establish ADP, really with the purpose of leveraging technology to address the, the, the key barriers to to financial inclusion. And when we looked at the numbers, the promising numbers, we could see that really, if there's a concerted effort, then there could be the opportunity for acceleration. But when we look at the things that create barriers, as you know, Jean-Louis has very articulately um, presented to us, cybersecurity is one for which there's significant risk. Actually, in addition to the, you know, the statistics he's given us, we see that 106 people actually gain access to the, anti uh, to the internet in Sub-Saharan Africa every second. But as much as they're gaining access, the hackers and the, you know, the, you know, the threats to, to cyber, to, to the security of what they're doing on the internet is equally um, quite evident. Every 39 seconds, a hacker is attempting you know, to, to breach uh, into somebody's uh, information or steal data. Africa actually is the most vulnerable on the continent when it comes to cyber crime. And the cost is extremely, extremely prohibitive is $3.5 million that really Africa, not, Africa cannot afford to, to, to lose. So when it comes to the ecosystem that the FDB, working with our partners, were looking to, um, to, you know, to develop and support uh, to ensure that resilience is, 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 um, is made, uh, becomes a reality, cybersecurity was identified as one of the critical things that we need to address to ensure that our population, which is the most vulnerable, actually can safely use um, digital financial services and allow them to thrive, not just um, gaining access, but also socially and economically. So really in terms of the ecosystem, cybersecurity sits at the heart of it. If we do not address these issues, and sometimes there's a temptation for these things to take as a, you know, a backseat to the more urgent uh, need for providing services or realizing profit, we are not going to reach the ultimate goal of real inclusion for the entire continent. So where for us, cybersecurity, consumer protection, things that make you know, that can help build resilience are really important. And that's why this particular initiative was critical for us to support. 
Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, thank you, Sheila. It's really interesting to see how you know the the increasing usage of of uh, digital financial services is obviously a very positive thing throughout the African continent, but it comes with its risks, um, and this these risks are, are real with with the cybersecurity cybersecurity issues, and one of those uh, one one of the ways of of mitigating those risks is is to raise the awareness, raise the awareness of the various stakeholders. And John Rui, maybe I can um, come to you and you know ask you what what are the challenges that you faced in terms of raising the, the awareness within the sector? Yes, um, one of the main uh, thing, of course, is uh, to raise the awareness before one institution has been hit by a breach and lost money. Uh, Suriquet has a number of customers uh, that became customers after having uh, uh, lost uh, 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 0.5 or 1, 1, 1 million USD, which is always a, 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 a pity. Let's have a look at the uh, Carnegie Endowment for International Peace timeline of cyber incidents in the financial uh, institutions in, in, in Africa. And you will see that uh, in the last uh, uh, three, four years, there has been very great uh, uh, attempts. Uh, some have been uh, uh, blocked um, uh, or failed, uh, like the Nigerian bank uh, uh, Swift East, uh, 100 million dollars, it's a lot of money, in Tunisia, in Liberia, uh, in uh, South Africa, Mauritius, uh, Nigeria, Gambia, and, and so on. And this is only a very small number of uh, uh, the attempts uh, or uh, success. So that amounts to 250 million, uh, which is a lot of money for most of these uh, um, institutions. So uh, uh, Jean-Louis, when you say success, successful failure, is that successfully, uh, it successfully defrauded that amount or successfully saved that amount? No, no, no. Uh, 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 it's from the hacker point of view. So. Okay. Some guys that just got this uh, 19 uh, million uh, uh, USD, uh, which is uh, which is nice. Of course, as we understand, uh, it is not uh, uh, local guys in most of the cases, but it is international organized crime. So one important point is that in Africa there is very little uh, data available. Uh, uh, on the acts uh, uh, or attempts or uh, um, fails. Uh, and this, of course, uh, makes uh, decision making more, more difficult for the boards, for the investors, for the donors, uh, especially in the case of uh, uh, financial inclusion. If you don't know what is happening in the country, there are little uh, chances that you will invest money in cybersecurity, but it is uh, uh, necessary. So we have also uh, to convince the board, uh, but also the employees that are often uh, uh, um, a weak uh, link uh, to, and that allows to enter in the, in, in the company. And we have also to uh, increase uh, uh, cybersecurity literacy for the users of uh, digital financial uh, uh, services. Thank you, thank you, Jean-Louis, for, for that kind of uh, present presentation. Maybe Sheila, maybe I'll come come to you next to discuss a little bit about the, the various stakeholders uh, along along this kind of uh, value value chain and how. Uh, difficult it is or what's being done in terms of bringing this issue to the forefront with the various stakeholders. Thank you, Matthew. I think one of the things that uh, the African Development Bank, you know, working with, you know, ADFI working with ACRC and the other stakeholders, what we're trying to do is, first of all, open the discussion, have a more open discussion around cybersecurity. I think Really, in the past, this has really been kind of an, an individual responsibility for each institution uh, to tackle on their own. But what we are realizing is that, you know, a threat to one is a threat to all. And really, for us to address this thing in a way that can be sustainable, it has to be an industry and ecosystem discussion. So what we are doing, working with ACRC and other partners, uh, like the, you know, the, the, um, John, we just mentioned the the Dale, Dale uh, Carnegie Mellon Initiative that is trying to 
bring, you know, consolidate the, bring the, agri the discussions to the table, bring everyone to the table to discuss cybersecurity in a way that we can address the issues together collaboratively. collaboratively. So what ACRC is doing, uh, working with the other, you know, ecosystem actors, is trying to ensure that we have discussions, open discussions. We try and um, share resources, share information in a way that is, you know, mutually supporting and 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 uh, reinforcing. So the development partners have also realized, like FDB, that it's important that we be part of these discussions, so that you know we have a closed loop where everybody is actually involved and trying to look for the you know the best solutions. So in terms of creating awareness, I think from a stakeholder perspective, you're looking at regulators, you're looking at the private sector where we have the financial service actors, both the bank and non-bank financial institutions. We're looking at uh, multilaterals like ourselves. So that open conversation, that um, uh, concerted effort is really what is happening now. So really kind of working with, with multiple multiple institutions along along the chain to, to build that awareness throughout the sector. Um, there's also the, the aspect of uh, building awareness, but also build, building capacities of those of those actors and, and reinforcing that, those capacities. Um, Jean-Louis, maybe I'll come to you. You know, what, what are the current challenges you face in terms of building those capacities with these with these stakeholders? Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, uh, building capacity is, uh, is uh, a must, a must do, but it is not that easy in the dimension of cybersecurity because the threats are evolving all the time and uh, because there are very, uh, very limited number of uh, master of science curriculum uh, throughout Africa. Uh, and uh, this field of cybersecurity is, requires a lot of expertise and uh, uh, you cannot get this expertise only uh, if you have an IT uh, training or a net, even a network uh, uh, training is not enough. You have to create, we have to create a, a dedicated cybersecurity master of science. So this is one point. The second is that uh, we are missing the teachers for this new curriculum. So one uh, aspect we are taking into account uh, in ACRC, and uh, we expect a number of uh, partners to, to, to join, to um, uh, increase this, this effort, uh, is to um, create uh, um, uh, PhD students, create is not the appropriate term in English, I'm sorry, uh, uh, um, to create a, a, a PhD students that will become teachers in this newly created or expanding uh, Master of uh, Science. That is for the education part. Uh, we we ne really need a very strong effort from the whole community. And I think the AFDB, I think the uh, regulators and supervisors, the countries also have to take uh, a part of this, uh, of this effort. We have also the workforce development that is, uh, that is important. Um, in the workforce development, uh, we will uh, uh, create or um, make available a number of uh, 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 training. Uh, it is important also to involve women. Uh, uh, the number of women uh, in cybersecurity uh, is not uh, uh, strong enough in, in, in Africa, although there are some really uh, brilliant uh, uh, examples. Um, and uh, so the workforce uh, uh, development and also uh, uh, capacity building should be seen in the long term. Uh, I mean, it is not just uh, uh, three days or five days training, and after that, you will become an expert. You need to be supported uh, by an organization uh, in the time, and this is also one of the key uh, targets of the ACRC. Okay, thank you. Uh, th thank you, jean -Louis. We'll come. We'll come to the... Um... ACRC in, in, in a little second, but first, maybe because we've got, I think on our, on, in the audience, we've got a lot of microfinance institutions, people from the financial inclusion sector. Um, when we think of cybersecurity, we often, you know, think of the, the large players, we think of traditional banks, but what are the points of attention or concrete actions that a microfinance institution, you know, even a small one needs to consider in order to, to reduce the risks, the, these risks, essentially, 
you know, what can a microfinance institution do to reduce ex its exposure to these cybersecurity risks? So we are talking about uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, institutions uh, in 54 countries. So uh, reaching out these uh, institutions is not that easy. And we count uh, on establishing partnerships with uh, professional associations, for example. Uh, say, uh, we, we have done it in the past with Shuriket in, in, in Senegal, uh, a partnership with a professional association uh, of uh, um, uh, microfinance. And this can be uh, reproduced uh, in all the uh, all the countries. The first step uh, will be awareness uh, rising, as we have uh, uh, discussed. The second uh, should be oriented on the diagnosis uh, of the uh, strengths and weaknesses of all of individual uh, institutions. And then we will be able to uh, build an, uh, a sound action plan. Uh, and then uh, more uh, um, services uh, should be uh, delivered, like uh, uh, training, like uh, uh, vulnerability scan, some more technical and some more oriented on the governance on, on, on cybersecurity. So we need the mix. And also, we need to create a, a, a kind of packages that will uh, uh, make these uh, services um, uh, accessible uh, to most of the uh, financial um, institutions. Thank you, Jean-Louis. Sheila, did you have something to add? Yes, Matthew, actually, on, on both the issues that John Louis has just talked about on capacity building and awareness, I think, you know, it's important for institutions such as the AFTB and our peers in, you know, in multilateral development organizations that because we have a, a direct contact with our member countries, uh, both in the private sector and the public spec sector. So, you know, just to, to be very uh, intentional in terms of bringing the discussion around the importance of cybersecurity to their project design, especially when you look at financial services. And I know this goes beyond it. So that being, being very intentional that even when we are supporting, for example, a payment system, we need to be able to ask upfront, how is cybersecurity being addressed? It needs to be identified as a threat that has to be dealt with and mitigated even within our project designs. The other thing that I think really touches at the core of why we are here today and, and our primary audience, which are the microfinance institutions, is the role they play in financial inclusion and access to finance on the continent. In Africa, this is really where the majority of our people are. So if the microfinance micro institutions are left behind in this discussion, or they are left to develop you know, without this threat being mitigated, then really it is going to be extremely difficult for Africa to be able to um, realize the financial inclusion that we are hoping to achieve through initiatives such as ADVI. So I think it's just important to underscore this, that the microfinance um, ecosystem and actors really need to take to heart this conversation. They need to be part of it to see how can we address it. We cannot be in the business of just supporting the large few institutions, which I think has really been um, a failure point for, for Africa. We need to be able to address um, everybody, especially those who are, are servicing our most vulnerable. So I think that's what I wanted to add um, with regards to this particular, the two points that John Lee was uh, speaking about. Thank you, Sheila. And I think it's a really, really fundamental point that, that you, you mentioned, you know, not to only focus on the large, large institutions and, and, you know, to also remember that there are smaller ones out there that, that do need support and do need to, um, to, to, be, to be offered the, uh, the ability to be able to protect themselves from, the, from these kind of threats. Um, Jean-Louis, do you have any like concrete examples of how an MFI, you know, has been affected and how they dealt with, um, with you know, uh, the issues that we're discussing? Yeah, we 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 have a number actually, yeah. uh, um, because every uh, month or so uh, we've got a call uh, uh, on the Monday morning uh, or sometimes on the weekend saying, okay, we have been hacked, uh, uh, what should we do? Um, uh, so this, uh, <laughs> as we said, 
is a, a strong way of increasing the awareness, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately a, bit, uh, a bit late. So we, we have had a, a recent case with a, a quite important uh, uh, MFI in, in, in West Africa uh, with about uh, 50,000 customers. And uh, one day they, they call us and say, okay, we have no more uh, uh, IT system operational. So we did some forensic analysis for uh, forensic investigation for them. And uh, we found out that the hacker had uh, introduced the system uh, something like four or five weeks before uh, the uh, ransomware uh, has uh, uh, actually encrypted all of the system. Uh, as they had, had all the time necessary to uh, understand uh, how the company was organized, what are uh, uh, the password for, for the uh, administrators, uh, when the backup is taking place, what is infrastructure and so on. Of course, uh, they encrypted all the systems uh, when the backup was uh, being done. So they also encrypted the, the backup system and the institution had no, no, no more um, uh, IT system. By luck, they found out uh, uh, an old hard disk drive uh, with a, a copy of the core banking system they had done a few months before for a technical reason, not for a backup because they had changed a machine or something like this. And they could uh, rebuild uh, their core banking system, uh, but the accounting system was lost forever and they had to enter all the accounting data for three and a half uh, years. Uh, which took them a while and cost them also a lot of uh, uh, money. So this institution uh, has, and it's just an example, has come very close uh, from closing uh, actually and uh, uh, having all the deposits of his customer probably uh, lost uh, uh, forever. Yeah, so that's a really, really interesting and scary example of how a how, a, how these threats can be really uh, institutional threats and, and threaten the, the institution itself. Um, speaking about solutions, Sheila, maybe maybe I'll come to you and, and, and just to, if you could tell us a little bit more about the this new initiative, the African uh, the the African Cybersecurity Centre, and kind of why uh, why why the African Development Bank launched this new consortium. Okay, so um, ACRC, you know, applied, like, like I mentioned earlier, the African Development Bank working with our part, trusted partners, um, the Gates Foundation, Agence Francaise de Développement, the Ministry of Finance uh, of the government of Luxembourg, and the French Treasury's um, Ministry of Economy and Finance, who are, these are our initial partners. We came together and said, look, we need to, address the issue of accelerating financial inclusion. It has a lot of promise for the continent, but we need to address the barriers because you can have a lot of promise, but you know, just from all the information Jean-Louis has given us, there are serious threats that prevent, you know, you know, prevent people actually taking up these services. And if we do not address them systemically, then we're not going to achieve our goal. We'll really just be running on the spot. So, Post the launch of VADFI, which happened in 2019, we launched a call for proposals and ACRC um, applied. There was, a hu there was huge demand. We had over 300 proposals, but eight promising proposals you know, um, were approved um, you know, for, for implementation. Now the ACRC project, of course, it, it has an attraction because it's, it's dealing with things not uh, in the medium term only, but also in the long term, so systemically. They are looking at capacity building. I mean, when you look at the figures, I mean, just think about it. 10,000, less than 10,000 um, experts on the continent compared to over 700,000 in the US. It's really huge. And as, as digital adoption is you know, accelerating across the globe, not just in Africa, the, that threat is actually also growing with it. So the reality is that we have to address this in a systemic way. So through academia, where we are actually making sure we develop skills that you know, train the trainer approach so that Africa can, have a, Africa can have a sustainable solution. And then also through the advisory services, which are going to be um, relatively affordable um, for, you know, for the continent so that we have more people being trained, more institutions, both upstream, the larger, more established ones, and those who you know, support the population further downstream, being able to access the services. 
So really they had a very compelling uh, proposition. But I think also what is very attractive about the ACRC is this is not a startup. They began in Senegal, actually went on the ground, set up shop, got the lessons, were able to scale, and now they want to take, you know, take this across the continent. So it's very ex exciting in terms of the potential it has, um, not just for the AFDB, but you know, the entire ecosystem. So I, I think that, that that would be my answer in a nutshell. Um, we are very excited about this initiative and we are you know, excited to work with ACRC and all the partners who, who will you know, come to support cybersecurity uh, resilience development on the continent. Thank you, Sheila. Jean-Louis, do you want to give a little bit more detail in terms of what concretely what uh, ACRC is doing? Yeah, uh, ju just a word. Uh, Sheila talked about uh, 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 systemic risk. Uh, um, I have a quote from an uh, Asia Pacific regulator uh, in uh, um, a report by the World Bank and Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance on uh, 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 fintech uh, uh, at the end of last year. And the regulator said, on systemic risk, a targeted cyber attack or some other form of external threat on a major fintech company has the potential to disable large parts of the economy without notice. And I think this is absolutely true. And we should, uh, at every uh, uh, um, level, keep this in mind uh, because it can happen uh, any day and you will have uh, millions of customers uh, uh, with no more access to their uh, financial uh, uh, services, which, which, which could prove quite uh, um, uh, difficult. So the ACRC, let me share. Um, sorry. But, uh, The ACRC is a not-for-profit public-private partnership consortium, uh, which we have uh, created a few, few months ago, uh, that gathers an experienced pluridisciplinary team uh, with a, about uh, 350 experts. Uh, it is form of uh, cybersecurity made in Luxembourg, which is a cybersecurity agency of the Luxembourg Ministry of the Economy that is in charge of the ecosystem buildup. We, we have talked a lot about uh, the ecosystem, about the financial sector, the digital financial uh, services, uh, and also incident uh, response and information sharing at uh, the European uh, uh, level. Uh, Security made in Luxembourg, for example, uh, is the core developer of the reference uh, threat information sharing platform that is used uh, worldwide by uh, uh, hundreds of uh, uh, institutions, uh, including the European Central Bank, for, for example, or the SWIFT, the SWIFT network. Then we have uh, the uh, SNT, which is a research center, cybersecurity research center within the University of Luxembourg. Uh, they have about 200 uh, researchers. Uh, they have a PayPal chair. They work with uh, uh, largest banks and on most uh, advanced uh, IT or cybersecurity uh, uh, components or, 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 or services. Of course, uh, they have a strong uh, uh, take on research, development, and innovation uh, and digital financial services. And they have already a number of academic partnerships in, in, in Africa. The last uh, uh, two members of the consortium uh, represent the private part uh, with the uh, practical experience in, in, in Africa, as Sheila uh, uh, mentioned. Uh, so it's about 130 experts from Excelium Group and uh, Suricate Solutions. Uh, uh, Excelium is a part of uh, one of the top five European pure players in, in cybersecurity. So basically, they have an understanding of uh, every component of uh, cybersecurity. They operate uh, a private incident response team called CCERT, and also several uh, security operation center, including the one from uh, Suricate Solutions in, in, in Dakar. So a very strong take on financial services, uh, uh, digital financial services, and operational security, because we are convinced that uh, uh, the fight against uh, uh, cybercrime uh, does not stop at the regulatory level, but we have to support at the uh, 
closest level uh, the financial institutions. And today we have uh, uh, from our uh, uh, headquarters in Senegal, uh, operation for uh, customers in about 20 countries in, 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 in Africa. So uh, to build a consistent um, uh, an open ecosystem, well, uh, actually it is not that easy. Um, so we need several components and we need a strong supporting organization. So the target, um, uh, as I said, is regulators, supervisors, financial service providers, and all financial inclusion uh, um, institutions. So the project ACRC is both regional, I mean continental, uh, and sectoral for the financial sector, not-for-profit organization, uh, for all uh, uh, players in, in the field, including uh, uh, postal networks, uh, including uh, uh, telecoms uh, that are involved uh, in uh, electronic money and, and, and so on, the fintech and so on. It is an independent organization. So it is not uh, a member or, or part of a, a country. Um, for several reasons. The first is agility, bring the services that are needed by the financial sector quickly. Uh, it needs to be consistent also. Uh, we have many uh, uh, international networks that operate within uh, Africa and uh, they need the same quality of services uh, in uh, Rwanda and in Ghana and in uh, Zambia. Uh, we need also to bring the same uh, uh, quality and we need also sustainability. After an investment phase, uh, uh, the project should be uh, uh, sustainable. That means that fees from uh, all uh, these uh, players uh, should pay for, the, for the, the, the cost. The core component is building a trusted community for information and best practices sharing, which is called an ISAC in our <laughs> vocabulary. Um, so this is very innovative. It will be the first in, 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 in Africa. Uh, of course, this experience uh, for the financial sector or this organization for the financial sector could be duplicated uh, later for other critical sectors like uh, health, uh, uh, transportation and, and, and electricity, energy, and, and so on. On this uh, uh, community, uh, we need a number of other co core components uh, um, to build uh, the basis for this uh, ecosystem. It is a research, development, and innovation, as we said before, to uh, uh, create and support master of cybersecurity, to train PhD uh, students, to do some research also for the financial sector uh, in, in, in Africa. It is a capacity building, uh, as, as uh, explained before. Uh, it is also what we call strategic and regulatory advisory. The idea there is to support the central bank on establishing uh, what we call uh, a, a smart regulation that can be enforced uh, uh, quite smoothly by the financial uh, uh, sector. And we will also uh, uh, have or work with other uh, transverse initiatives like uh, gender gap bridging, uh, hackathons to uh, contribute to increase the awareness uh, on cybersecurity and cybersecurity jobs, which are uh, needed. And uh, in this community, it will be also open to other uh, information sharing contributors that can be uh, uh, country CERT. CERT is a computer emergency response team. So it is a, the national cybersecurity agency. Uh, it could be law enforcement. It could be research universities and, and so on that have to be included uh, uh, in this uh, uh, community. Then, uh, as the idea is to be catalyst and synergistic, we will have a number of partnerships with professional associations, academia, other organizations, other initiatives, authorities, donors, and, and so on. And so we see something that is uh, 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 organic. Uh, it is an ecosystem. It is something that is, uh, that is uh, living. And the last part, more operational, is to contribute to the development of a proximity network of reference 
commercial partners uh, in uh, all sub-regions of uh, Africa for uh, managing incident response, security supervision, governance services, uh, penetration testing, and all the other uh, commercial uh, services. So that is the way we will build this uh, uh, ecosystem. Thank you. Last point, uh, uh, the- If you could, Jean-Louis, just, yes. I'm just looking at the time and I'd yes. quite like to get some questions from the, from the panel. So if you could just, uh, sure. maybe just two, two, two minutes. Okay, um, just uh, a second. Uh, so uh, the consortium will, will roll out a quite comprehensive range of uh, about 50 different services. Uh, so we don't stop at uh, PowerPoint, uh, but we stop when we uh, uh, help, we support the customer in practice uh, uh, in all the, the countries. So the services should be inclusive in, uh, in the sense that all organization should be, uh, uh, should have access to these services. It should be affordable also. Uh, it should be adapted and packaged for the different uh, uh, sectors within the financial sectors. And all these uh, uh, components that we have seen uh, will be of uh, interest for that or that sector. It is just an, an example here. Also to uh, ease the access for the in, in institutions, uh, we are building a number of package. Uh, uh, we know what are the needs of a small MFI compared to medium MFI. And so we will package for them these services uh, and deliver uh, them or, or make this uh, um, bring to their uh, uh, bring to them also in partnership with the professional association. And we have also building uh, a, a FinTech startup pack because we have noticed that in many, many cases, uh, uh, FinTech are really uh, uh, many things to do in, in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Our first big event will be uh, uh, during uh, ADA's uh, African Microfinance Week in Rwanda uh, in uh, uh, October. Uh, so. Our side event uh, will be the first African cybersecurity information sharing and research conference for the financial sector. So save the date and we will uh, be happy to work for this uh, collaborative effort with, with, with you. Thank you, Jean-Louis. You've, you've, uh, and it's great that you've mentioned the, the, the fifth SAM, which is the, the African Microfinance Week that will, be taking from, that will be take place from the 18th to the 22nd of October uh, in Kigali, uh, Rwanda. I'm gonna. I, I had a question for for my panelists, but I'm gonna jump straight to the audience. Um, and I've been collecting some of your questions in the chat. Um, please don't hesitate. If you do have other questions, you can you can set, put them in the chat, and we will try and respond to you. Uh, if we don't manage to in the session, we'll try and respond to you afterwards. Um, the one question, Sheila. Maybe I'll come to you. Um, the role of the central banks. Um, the, the question is, what, what role does the central banks play to regulate and secure this ecosystem? Thank you, Matthew. I mean, the central bank plays such a critical role, you know, in the financial services ecosystem. They are the, you know, the, 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 they, they sit between the service providers and the, you know, the end users. So their role is really, really critical. And for them to be able to, you know, adequately um, supervise or oversight and ensure that the services that they're actually allowing to be retailed, uh, you know, in, in the market are addressing cybersecurity. Because if cybersecurity is run, left to run, um, you know, a mock or it's left to infiltrate the ecosystem, you lose trust in the ecosystem. And one of the core functions of the, of, of the regulator is to build trust in the financial services that are being retailed. So they really are at the center of this. They, they have to become part of that conversation to ensure that, um, you know, that the people who are retailing the services are actually addressing this in a systemic way. So absolutely very important that the, the regulators are you know, in the center of this conversation. Thank you, Sheila. Jean-Louis, if you have any, anything to add, please don't, don't hesitate to, to jump in. Yeah, would you like that uh, uh, I answer to some of the questions that are on the chat or we do it later? Uh, well, I'm doing it currently, I'm doing it 
at the moment. Um, we can, you can write it then, then later. But let, let's just concentrate. I've, I've looked at some of the questions, and there are quite a few on capacity building, and initi what initiatives uh, are out there um, in the market to build build this capacity. So maybe Jean Louis, coming to you, what what, what is out there for these uh, institutions to be able to kind of build their capacity? Yeah. The, the, the thing is, for uh, a number of years, uh, uh, even if we work uh, hard, and I hope that uh, our efforts uh, will be uh, uh, um, relayed by other uh, uh, players to increase uh, uh, education in cybersecurity, I mean, uh, graduate education, uh, for uh, a number of years, uh, we will have uh, still uh, limited uh, uh, resources available. So uh, we have to be smarter, and smarter uh, means, um, as, as Sheila has uh, uh, noted before, uh, working together. It is working together in the information sharing. For example, if you try to create an information sharing organization at a national level, uh, uh, the financial markets uh, in most, uh, not to say all, um, uh, countries in Africa are too small to uh, share things that are really relevant. So you need to uh, um, move at a higher level, which is the, the continent, and also exchange information with other continents. So the collaboration is not only within Africa, but also uh, with uh, the international information uh, um, uh, sharing organization. The second thing is uh, collaborate uh, uh, to make sure not to duplicate the efforts. Uh, when uh, you have uh, a master of science, uh, you could have two universities with, uh, uh, that want to start a master of science but uh, they may have some specialties. One will be more involved on the network and the other on uh, another component, but maybe 80 or 90% of the uh, curriculum is, is the same. So maybe it is better to collaborate earlier uh, uh, to establish uh, a common curriculum, and then each university would be able to customize on, on the uh, specialties. You, you can have also collaboration uh, uh, on more operational uh, uh, services uh, for the smaller um, uh, uh, microfinance that will never be in a position to find and then to pay uh, 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 a chief information security officer, even a small one, it's expensive. So maybe uh, they could be uh, um, uh, supported by uh, one shared uh, information um, uh, uh, chief information uh, service officer, information security officer, that could be shared between five or ten uh, microfinance and bring them guidance uh, 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 on this long path for uh, improve uh, uh, cybersecurity. So these uh, kind of uh, collaboration uh, initiatives we can we can have, and and we have many many, but I think it is the only way to move uh, uh, for the financial sector in, uh, in, in Africa. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jean-Louis. Um, I'm just looking at the time and I think we're gonna have to start wrapping up this session. I know there's been a lot of questions in the chat. We'll try and respond to them uh, as, uh, as, as, as we can. Um, but I'd like to launch the survey that we launched at the beginning of, the, of, the, um, of, the, of this session, just to see if there's any been any evolution in terms of how serious an issue cybersecurity is for your institution. So one being low and five being high. And I just want to see whether um, our discussion today uh, changed uh, the risk perception of cybersecurity. So I'll give you five more seconds to complete this. And yeah, well, we can close. We can close it now, and um, we'll show you the results. And so they are, they're, they're quite similar. But I mean, the the awareness is 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 uh, even higher now, which I think is a is a is a is a positive thing. I think it's important that you know the awareness of cybersecurity is 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 appreciated. 
Um, and we had about 80% that was, before we had about 80% that was uh, three and above. And I think there at the end, we have uh, 90%. So we, did, we, did do, we didn't do too bad in terms of raising, increasing the awareness of the, of the cybersecurity. Um, so I'm gonna move on to, I'm gonna invite Evo uh, to uh, conclude our session. And I'd like to just um, ask Evo from, you know, from, from everything that you've been listening to and from your, your experience as well, if you had a, a call to action essentially to, uh, to any stakeholder that you could choose um, anything for them to do, what, what, what would it be Evo? Well, thank you very much, Matthew, and thanks uh, to Ada for, for inviting me to participate in such a rich discussion. I really enjoyed it and learned a lot. Um, I should just say at the very beginning that, you know, SIGAP uh, puts a lot of trust in digital technology and digital financial services as a means of helping poor people, especially women, to capture opportunities and build resilience. And so we increasingly recognize that speaking about responsible financial services does not only include the traditional consumer protection, but also uh, cyber resilience. So it's a very important uh, topic, obviously. In terms of the call, call to action, um, I mean, there are many calls to action, I guess, that already Jean-Louis and, and, and Sheila mentioned, but uh, there are two that I'd like to make. One is to donors, investors, and sort of multilaterals or development organizations to really use this, uh, this initiative of Africa Cyber Security Resource Center to test that approach and perhaps replicate it and scale it up across regions and across uh, continents because it seems to be a way to go to address this, this large capacity gap that has been identified in the cybersecurity space. So that would be one. And then the second one is call to action for uh, to, to policymakers, which is, is, is two, um, has a two layers. Uh, one is really uh, the call on financial sector regulators and, and, and central banks to take this agenda on and lead and, and join those 14 regulators already mentioned by Jean-Louis and, 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 and lead the agenda and be the trendsetter for the cyber security. Um, because as Sheila mentioned, they are the guardians of trust when it comes to the financial sector. And so I think it is inherently their role to lead on the cyber security. The other aspect is maybe to think about this model of cooperation and pooling resources and cross-jurisdictional cooperation as a way to go in many other areas, not only cybersecurity, but one area that comes to mind is just data analytics that regulators and financial industry has to use and where we see another important capacity gap. So maybe replicate this model also beyond just uh, cyber resilience. Thank you, Thank you. For, for this really, uh, really in interesting and interesting conclusion to the debate. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this session just in time. Um, I'd like to thank enormously uh, my panelists, Jean-Louis and, and Sheila, and also Ivo for his, uh, for, for his conclusion. I'd like to thank, obviously, all the participants for taking part um, and asking, asking your questions, the interpreter as well, and also, obviously, the Luxembourg government, um, Infine and uh, BRS for their support in organizing this, this meeting. Um, the recordings will be available on ADA's website in French and, and in English, I'm told. Um, and um, and uh, I think that's it. So, so really, thank you everyone for all your support. And uh, I look forward to continuing the discussion in Kigali uh, in October. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, okay. Ada. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Jean-Louis. Thank you, Ivo and Matthew and Elisa. Thank you. Thank and the you. interpreter, all the people in the background. Thank you. And the audience. Thank you so much. Just Bye -bye. A point. Uh, there are a number of uh, uh, questions uh, we could not uh, answer. Uh, so in, in my presentation, you will have my coordinates. So you can write to me and we can... Uh, uh, go, go on uh, other uh, points. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thanks, Sean. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.